Yo, what's good everybody? Keith from Almost in Full Color and today we have our Tekken 8 review. I don't think that within a seven month period we got a Street Fighter entry, a Mortal Kombat entry, and a Tekken entry. I say that to say Evo is going to be crazy this year, y'all. I can't wait to tune in. But this is about Tekken 8. So let's start with the first thing that we see, and that's the visuals. The game is stunning. I could use so many other synonyms and go on and on. But look, y'all, game looks amazing. A lot of flashy moves, a lot of stuff going on the screen. The environments are crazy. I love what I saw out of those. And even with all that going on, the fidelity was strong. I don't think I noticed any drop frames or lack of fidelity by way of resolution. So I'm very happy with what I saw in the visuals department. Character models are fire. Some characters are a bit gaudy. However, I feel like it's within their personality scope. Lee Shaolong, he's an adopted son of Heihachi. He, he doesn't have those natural gifts that Kazuya was born with. So, you know, he's had to do things to try to keep the edge, to keep him on the up and up and able to bang and able to compete. Thus, the Violet suit. I don't really care for the way it looks, but... You know, it's within his personality scope. Lily wears these elegant dresses, and that's all what she's about is elegance. You know, we have Fang Wei with his dragon garb. Fire. We have Lars with the Lion of the Rebellion suit. Fire. <laughs> so some characters, their, mo their model design, absolutely amazing. And I just can't be happier with what we're seeing on screen. Some characters, eh, you know, they're all right. Others, whew. Boy, I don't even want to customize them because they're so crazy. One thing I do want to get into real quick, though, before we continue the video, if you plan on playing a lot online, you should go into your settings tab, change the rollback netcode to prioritize response. That should be the natural setup, but I don't know. Somebody maybe just didn't push the right button when they rolled the game out. Who knows? But change that. Your online experience will be much better, all right? Another thing I want to alert you to is that that first tab that you come into when you load the game up is your favorites tab and you can actually take things out of there. And I feel like this was done just so that you can put the things that you really want to play in that tab to help you get to where you want to be faster and be more efficient with that. Tekken 7, I felt like the load times for the matches were so long and that's something that they wanted to cut, cut down on, help you get to where you want to be a little bit quicker and load in quicker so instead of waiting 45 seconds to a minute for a match to load instead no you're only waiting now between four and nine seconds and you're also getting there faster so kudos to them for just doing that little quality of life thing that you know is small in nature but i think has a big impact overall i want to get into the sound real quick it's absolutely amazing to me that they use voice actors from the regions that the character is from just to give that level of authenticity that I think you don't get anywhere else. So it's absolutely amazing. The voice actor for Victor Chevalier is, you know, one of my favorites. I'm so happy that they got him to do this. We also have the great Lynn Hart. For those who don't know who Lynn Hart is, I hear her about once a year. And that is for the Ryzen MMA New Year's Eve event that they put on. And she typically announces the competitors for that event. And I am so happy that she was in there to do a little bit more than just those YouTube shorts that they dropped for each character. She does have quite a bit of presence within the game. So thank you all for having her there because she's an absolutely an amazing voice. An absolutely amazing announcer to have call you out. To go and bang some knuckles all right soundtracks for tekken throughout the years have been amazing and this is no different all right but one dope thing you can do is you can go into the jukebox and you can actually pick tracks from older tekken games so if you have a favorite track from one of the older games you can actually set that to be the music to any of the stages that you want so absolutely amazing just that quality of life thing that still is coming over it was present in tekken 7 so very happy that that is continuing on and we should see that going forward in the future. Uh, you gotta love being able to make your own custom playlist within the game. I mean, you always could mute that BGM and then put on some Spotify or whatever it is that you use. But that's just something there for you in case you're interested, all right? And before I told you that the environments were absolutely crazy and a lot was going on with them, some of them have things like storms in the background, lava spewing, and the sound is amazing. If you have a surround sound system, and you, it does utilize that surround sound system, so you can hear waves crashing around you as you're fighting. The impact from the fist hitting is there, and it's more prevalent than those noises. 
but yet it's all just very cohesive and once you experience you'll you'll understand like wow like they did a really good job with balancing this sound and i feel like i'm really in this fight and it just feels like a heavyweight match and i'm going for the title right now so kudos to them on the sound because it's absolutely amazing. So next I want to talk about the story. But before I talk about the story of Tekken 8, I do want to reference Tekken 7. Tekken 7, the story is there's this blood feud. Mishima or Mishima blood. Hahachi feels this way. Kazuya feels this way. And this is not going to be settled in a therapist's office. One of us has to go. One of us got to die. And that's the only way that this ends. It's not no cutesy bootsy story or nothing like that. That's just what this story is. Fast forward to Tekken 8. A victor was decided in that. It was Kazuya. He killed his father. It's It was done. After that event, we meet up with Kazuya and Jin in New York. Is, I guess a little fast forward, which is cool. They just start property damage all over the place. And, you know, uh, the story continues. My issue is you go from Jin and Kazuya just really going ham to then have it. Oh, because Jin... You're the light. You're and it goes into this real anime, lighthearted, hope, friends, bonds nonsense. And I understand why it's present, but this is still a story about somebody who's going to kill his dad. I don't know who got off on trying to make this a feel good, happy go lucky story. But hey, it happened. That's basically the tonality of the story. It goes like touch of dark and then it's oh but jen you know you're alive and come on and live come back to us and all this i didn't really care for it to be honest with you all the other story beat i didn't care for was a setup for tekken 9 or tekken tag 3 whichever one they're gonna go with the setup is there but it was done in such a lazy way to me i feel like you know they just they just put it right there and they're like hey yeah this this is the future of tekken by the way so all right let us know if you have any questions but back to jenna kazuya that's definitely what it felt like i think they had the opportunity to do more setup and really make it feel like while jenna kazuya are doing this this other thing is happening but i felt like the ball was just dropped in that department but overall i think the story was pretty good um i'm not unhappy with it at all i feel like they put a cap on this patricide saga this father's killing or son's killing father's episode that's existing. So that seems to be over and done with. The story is very anime. If you enjoy anime, like I think you really will like this story because it's going to remind you of an anime that you watched and it is over the top. It is extremely an over the top story. So if you're into that, you're going to absolutely love this story. For me, it was a cool story. It was flashy. I liked it for what it was. But it also had a throwback to the Tekken Force, if for those who remember that game mode, which I hope comes as like DLC or something, because I really enjoyed playing that mode when it existed in the story in the Operation Rebellion mission. And just for those who maybe go through the story and maybe you're unsure of what the setup is looking like, just do the bad ending in order to get that. Let Kazuya win the very last round and you'll get the bad ending. And then I think you'll be able to piece all the puzzles together about everything. But as long as you're just watching you shouldn't miss it all right so you beat the story what else is there to do is it just straight to online gameplay is it just offline gameplay or actually there is something that you can do that's pretty cool it's called arcade quest and what you're going to do is you're going to make an avatar and that avatar is going to go in the arcade world and they're going to try their best to become the next tekken world tournament winner so basically it is your quest to play npcs and try to make your way to the tekken world tournament it's pretty fun mode and that mode is also very lighthearted and it's about you can play tech in your way you don't have to be a try hard you don't have to be a sweat you could be a casual and you could still have fun with tech and there is no right or wrong way to play tech and there's only your way but overall fun little game mode not bad you're just kind of going through and max your professor i don't know if that's a shout out to maximilian dude if it is that's very cool but Max is your professor who helps you learn some basic things about Tekken. So it also serves as just a learning tool just to help you kind of make sure that you understand some of the system. You have the regular arcade mode after that. You know, you just go through several bouts. You fight the final boss, the end. 
you also have character episodes. Now I was hoping this character episodes is gonna be the bridge between the story mode itself and some of those pieces that I felt like were missing and just a little off to kind of help bridge some of those gaps and fill in some voids. Unfortunately, it really didn't. It's still kind of like you go through some of the characters win the Iron Fist tournament and it shows what they would have done with the money and the power and the fame. Or some characters don't actually participate in the Iron Fist tournament. It kind of shows what they do after all the events. So it's kind of weird because you get this mixed bag of things. And I just feel like they should have went all one way or all the other. Either A, you just have characters who fight like Jun, who doesn't fight in the Iron Fist tournament. She sets off on a mission and it seems like hers may be an actual true, well, this is actually what she did after the events of Tekken 8. Whereas other characters like Huarang do not seemingly have an ending that is conducive to what would be at the end of Tekken 8. So the heat bar is really cool, really not going to get into it, but it's basically a mode that you put your character into. Now you can do this manually through a combo or you can just do it just by triggering it by pressing R1. But you go into this mode and it opens up a few more moves to each character. They're unique and each character has what's known as a heat smash. So once you burn it, it your heat meter is gone for the whole thing. So managing your heat meter, how much is left and heat play is going to be very crucial to some very top tier and some very advanced combos. Really, really be looking into that for those who are looking to get further into this game. Now there is one thing I think I kind of have a gripe with, but not in the way I think a lot of people will think. There's something that's known as special style, which is basically like the modern controls. It, it basically is auto combos for you. Um, so you just tap square, or tap triangle, or whatever it's telling you to tap, and it, it basically does it for you, the system does. And you can actually have this at least in player matches. I have not seen anyone in ranked with it, so I don't know if you could do it in ranked. But it does seem that in player matches, like you can do it. And my gripe isn't that it exists. I haven't lost anyone who uses a special mode. But what it does do is it hinders the player because it only leaves you so many combos to do. And if you only have four or five combos at your disposal, me reading four or five combos, it's not going to be hard. You're not going to win. So I feel like it's not helping anyone get better. It's not helping anyone learn how this game is supposed to be played. And I feel like that's just a disservice and it's going to make a lot of people fit flare out. Honestly, I think it's it's catered to casuals, people who've never played before. But I feel like it doesn't really incentivize them to really, really try and really, really get to learn the system, learn how to do combos manually, learn what triggers what and learn about frame data. So, yeah, it's a tasking. It's something that it's I'm not going to say like, oh, anyone can do it. And it's super easy. I mean, it's either going to be like it or you don't and you'll do it or you won't. But I feel like that special mode is just not conducive to helping anyone. I think more people using it are going to lose than win. That's just my take on it. Honestly, I I really hope that if you're using a special mode, please just turn it off. Like just just sit down in practice mode for you know four hours yes like four hours five i've sat in practice mode already for about six so just sit in practice mode really learn your character the ins and outs and and really learn the way that their body looks when they they take a certain hit this is really going to prevent you some heartache currently i've lost twice they were bad l's too that boy dragon off is nasty right now but nonetheless learn your character nothing wrong with that but all right you all that's gonna do it for this one as you see this video was a little bit longer than the other reviews but this game is absolutely amazing top to bottom it's a great package honestly story a little on the weaker side but it's very fun it's very flashy it's very cinematic it's everything i think that you would want in a, in a big production the menus great the load times great the character models, great. The customization system that exists there. I mean, you can take your fight money that you'll get from just playing in matches. You could buy new clothes for your characters and really make your character your own. And there are even ways to try to get better on your own through the ghost system, which AI pretty much takes over and really studies the way that you play and other people around the world. And you can actually go and play that data and just practice and just really, really try to see what you can come up with 
without having to go into an online experience if you really don't want to deal with people just yet all right that's going to do it for this one you all tekken 8 is a very great game i i encourage anyone if you're a fan of tekken go and get this game it's amazing i'm sure i'm probably gonna be posting some ranked gameplay on the channel at some point in the near future but in order to catch that hit that subscription button and notification button and be tuned in because roger i'm sure will be dropping a yakuza video soon and I too will be dropping a Grand Blue Fantasy Relink video in the near future, all right? So, thank you all for tuning in, and as usual, peace, be easy, be blessed. She hails from the Ortiz farm, known for its Peruvian coffee. Who knows what this rising star of MMA will accomplish? Azucena M. Ortiz! <laughs>